Hey guys, it's Christian here and today I'd like to show you these new LCD screens and the status monitor application that I'm running on my Raspberry Pis. I've recently done this on my 3-node Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster that we've built together last year because honestly I think this just looks pretty cool and when you're working on the server rack it is also useful to get some information about the devices. If you've watched the Kubernetes video you might remember I already got some LCD screens shipped by the of the server case but for some reason these LCD screens didn't work at all so I had to order some new ones and because I couldn't find a great program that would write exactly what I wanted to see on this LCD screen I've also written my own small Python script that prints some useful information about the CPU memory and disk utilization of the Pi but also the IP and host name of the node as well as the running Docker containers and even Kubernetes pods and namespaces. This Python application that I've written is by the way available completely for free as a Docker container so if you've got a Raspberry Pi and a small LCD screen you can just download and run it if you like. Of course in this video I would like to go through all of the steps you have to do to make this work so I hope you're gonna enjoy it. However before we start I quickly want to show you another cool application that is called Remotely the sponsor of today's video. Remotely is a remote access tool for your work and games which is a super fast, secure and incredibly simple way to jump into your Windows PC from anywhere and it even let you play games with full 4K HDR support and 60 FPS which sounds pretty cool for all the gamers watching right now but it is also useful for sysadmins or tech support guys to control the mouse and keyboard, transfer files or even record the session. It is super simple to use so you can just start remotely on your computer then it generates a strong connection ID that you can use to connect to this machine which you might remember from another popular remote access tool but let me tell you remotely has a few unique advantages over similar applications. First of all it allows you to set up a private relay server so that you can easily self-host in your own infrastructure and it is also using modern protocols and hardware acceleration like HVEC and code to make the connection really fast, secure and efficient. And the best is for home users it has a free tier for one remote session and unlimited peer-to-peer -peer transfer in 4K resolution. By the way for companies that want to use remotely for supporting their customers they also have a very cool offering allowing you to manage hundreds of devices and a flexible pay-as-you-go pricing. So if you want super simple remote access what are you waiting for? Just download remotely and try it out of course you will find a link to it in the description of this video. All right, so now let me come back to my little Raspberry Pi LCD screen project. As I've already said in the beginning of this video, I've just connected these LCD screens to my three node Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster that I built last year because the rack server case that I bought has a pretty cool feature. It has a small enclosure where you can place a small 16 by two LCD screen connected to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO. So the general purpose input and output pins. And this allows you to display basically anything on the screen that that you want. However, the challenge that I had with this project was that for some reason the LCD screens that were shipped with the server rack case, they didn't work with the Raspberry Pi and honestly I haven't found out until today what was the actual problem with these specific models. So maybe the LCD screens were broken or there was a problem with this particular model and the Raspberry Pi 5. I really don't know but I just wanted to get this working and therefore I just ordered new LCD screens from a different vendor that is free Nov, because that seems to be a brand that also does a bunch of other peripherals and accessories for the Raspberry Pi so this sounded like a good idea to me and yeah this new model then luckily just worked perfect. But it's also pretty interesting when you compare this LCD screen model from Freenove that I got with the older LCD screens that I got with the case, you can see that it is a bit different. On the homepage of Freenove, it says that the new model integrates the conversion circuit. So this seems to be this small little thing on the back of the older screens with the four pin connectors. And that is responsible for the interpretation of the signals that come from the Raspberry Pi. And because this is now directly integrated into this new model 
available from Freenove, this seems to be more reliable and it just works better. However, I still just want to say that if you're watching my other videos, you probably know that hardware isn't really my thing. So maybe I've done something wrong with the older LCD screens and they would also work. But I at least can confirm that this new LCD screen is working on my Raspberry Pi 5. <laughs> By the way, I've also updated the product links on my kit page, so where you can find all of the parts that I've used for the Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster project. So here you can find a direct link where you can just order these updated LCD screens from Amazon, for example. Link is, of course, in the description. Now, if you're wondering how exactly you connect the LCD screen to the Raspberry Pi, actually, it is pretty simple. You just connect the four pins on the LCD screen to the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi. Obviously, you have to do it in the right order, otherwise it doesn't work. And then you can use a simple script or program to print something out on the screen. By the way, what also has been super useful to find out which exact pins I have to use on the GPIO, I found this website here called pinout.xyz. So all credits go to this incredible project here. There you can very simply see what pins on the Raspberry Pi have which particular function with a great explanation and some examples. In the case of my LCD screen, I just had to connect the first pin to the 5 volt power and the second one to the ground and the other two ones to the I2C data and I2C clock pin. Please don't ask me what these mean. You can probably check it out on the website if you want. And then if you've made the physical connection to the LCD screen, you can go into the operating system and use a program to print out something on the screen. I just want to quickly show you how that's working on my testing Raspberry Pi. So I just open a, a secure connection over SSH to this Raspberry Pi. By the way, I'm using here the Ubuntu 2404 LTS Linux operating system. So I'm not using the Raspberry Pi operating system. So maybe some of the commands and packages are a bit different if you're using a different OS, of course. But if you're using Ubuntu, you can basically just follow and install the package i2c-tools. So these are some command line utilities that you can simply use to find out whether the LCD screen has been correctly configured. Before we run this program, you should do an LS mod to find out whether the kernel modules of the I2C packages are correctly loaded. So if this is not the case, you might have to tweak something in the operating system or in the bootloader to load these kernel modules. In my case, this was working in Ubuntu by default, so nothing I had to do. And then you can run the small program I2C detect with a dash Y1. In some older tutorials, I, by the way, I have also seen the uh, dash Y0. So that depends on which port or pins you have connected the LCD screen to. But in my case, it is one. If you see a 27 somewhere in the output matrix of this command, you know that the LCD screen has been correctly uh, connected to the data pins. Uh, so if you connected the wrong pins, you might see a dash dash in that address here. And then you know, the physical connection isn't working correctly, so you might have to change the pins and try out something else. If you see that number here, the physical connection is working and now you can use an application or software to connect to the screen using the bus and then print something out on the terminal. So I also want to show you how you can do this. And honestly, I know there probably is some cool programs you can use here and there, but I think the most simple and easy way to print out something on the screen quickly is to use a small Python script. And don't worry if you don't know Python by detail. So I try to make it very simple. So there are just a few lines that you need in Python to make this work. But before we can do that, we first of all need to install two libraries here. First of all, the RPLCD library that will send the right instructions to the LCD screen and the SMBus2 that is also needed for the connection. And you can just simply use uh, pip, the package installer for Python. Uh, I'm using the quick and dirty uh, way to simply install it system-wide. By the way, of course, you can also write a simple uh, virtual environment for your Python script and so on. But I'm not going into Python programming today. I just want to make it uh, simple here. And then we just want to create a new test.py file where we can start writing our Python script. Uh, okay, so the first line we have to write is we first of all need to import the third party library. So from the RP LCD um, I2C library, we need this here, the character LCD object. And uh, then we want to create a new instance of that object. And here we need to fill in some information about the screen. So first of all, we need to add the I2C expander. So I think this is a model of the LCD screen. I found that the PCF 
8574 is the model that I'm using. So this will work for a 60x2 LCD screen, the one from Freenove that I got. And then we need to fill in the address. So this is the address on the bus where the LCD screen is connected. In my example, it is a 27. So remember, 27 is the number from the output of the I2C tools command. I've connected this to uh, port one, and then we need to define how many characters and how many rows this LCD screen has. So uh, just that you know, there are different LCD screens around, but the ones that fit into my server rack case are the 60 by two LCD screens. So uh, we need to define the columns with 60 characters and two rows and also set the dot size to eight. So I think this is everything that we need to define the LCD screen as an object that we can use. And then we now can use instructions. First of all, I want to execute the lcd.clear function because if you print something on the terminal uh, by another program, that will still remain on the screen even if the program was exited. So if you want to refresh the screen, you always have to do an lcd.clear and then you can start writing something with the lcd.write string function. So here you can print any character um, that is in the mapping table of this object here. You can also define custom characters, by the way, but if you want to print out something simple, you can just use a hello world, for example. And yeah, that's everything you need to print something on the screen. So now to run the Python program, you just enter python3 test.py and run it. And if you've installed everything correctly, you can see hello world is now <laughs> displayed on the screen. So this is pretty cool, right? And if you're a bit familiar with Python programming, you can basically just write your own Python script to maybe query some information on the operating system, put that in a variable, and then write this uh, variable um, using the LCD write string function and so on. And yeah, that's basically uh, what I've done. I just want to show you the project that I'm currently working on. By the way, in the description, you will also find a link to this GitHub repository. So at the time of recording this video, this is still a private repository, but I will make this public once I publish the video. So you can basically just, um, yeah, check the source code in here. I've also written a small readme file that will tell you how to use this script. So you don't have to download and run this Python script by yourself. You can just um, use the Docker container to simply uh, run it on your Raspberry Pi. And I quickly want to show you how to do this because I've um, added an, an example uh, docker compose file here so this is a compose project that you can use to deploy it here you will find the image and uh, download the latest version of the image and yeah maybe let's uh, do this together on my raspberry pi i just want to create a new um, directory that i just call lcd demo and uh, let me just open this in my uh, code editor uh, let's connect over ssh to the raspberry pi so now we are in the folder of the remote Raspberry Pi. Here I just want to create a new file that is called compose.yaml. And here we can basically just copy and paste everything from the example compose project on the GitHub repository. And then we need to pass in a few volumes here. So first of all, this is a file that is only available when you're using a Kubernetes cluster on this Raspberry Pi. So in my Kubernetes project that has a k3s.yaml cube config file. So in here, there are the credentials located so that the container can connect to the Kubernetes cluster to uh, print out some information about it. So if you're not running Kubernetes on your Raspberry Pi, you can basically ignore this. Also, if you're not running Docker on the Raspberry Pi, you can also ignore it. And it can also print out the temperature of the uh, CPU of the Raspberry Pi. So therefore, I need this mount point here. And uh, there's also a configuration file that we have to create. So this tells the Raspberry Pi LCD status monitor, what configuration or what monitors it should print out, what is the delay and so on. And we of course have to mount the device, the I2C on port one, so the LCD screen to the container so that it can access it and print out some information. And then we start the uh, container automatically if we reboot the system unless it is stopped. So I think this is a pretty simple uh, compose file. If you're familiar with my other Docker tutorials and my videos, you probably know how this is working. If not, I've made some beginner videos about Docker and Docker Compose, so definitely check it out. I'll link you that in the description. But yeah, so um, that's basically everything. Uh, of course, now we still need a config file. So I'm creating a new a directory called config 
and a new config file, config.yaml. And of course, I've also created an example config file that you can use on the GitHub repository. So here, just copy and paste everything. So this will uh, basically tell the small Python script to run the system monitor. So this will show the CPU utilization and memory. If you don't want it to print the memory utilization, you can set this variable to false if you like. So then it's just printing out CPU utilization. But I usually like to have both. So uh, set this to true. And the disk monitor will print out the uh, disk size and the utilization of the disk. The server info monitor will show the IP address of the ETH0 interface. So in here you can put a different name. If you have a different name of the interface, usually by default it is, it is ETH0. So if you run an IPA, you should see the different IP addresses. And maybe if you have a different Wi-Fi uh, IP of the Raspberry Pi that you want to show, give it the name of the VLAN interface, for example. But the ETH0 should be the default. And of course, I want the LCD screen to print out this IP address. So. That's um, uh, why I put the corresponding uh, interface name in here. The container monitor will try to connect to the Docker socket that we mount uh, to this container and tries to uh, gather the running and the stopped container. So this will print out some information about that. The temperature monitor will try to read the temperature from this location in here. And the Kubernetes monitor tries to load the cube config file to connect to the Kubernetes cluster and print some information. Technically, you could also give it a different cube config file with a different IP address and so on. So you could connect to a remote Kubernetes cluster and print some information on the screen. Uh, but yeah, I've developed it in a way that it tries to connect to the locally uh, configured cluster by using this uh, cube config file. So I'm disabling this here for now because I don't need this on my testing Raspberry Pi. It doesn't have a Kubernetes cluster running in here. So simply deactivate what you don't want this uh, monitor to print. And the delay is the time in seconds. So maybe uh, if you want to increase that so that the statistics uh, stay a bit longer on this screen and change the number to any delay that you want. All right, so now we got everything that we need. Uh, we got the Docker Compose file, we got the config file. So now we go back to the terminal and go into the LCD demo project. And I hope that I've installed Docker in here. Oh yeah, so that's running. And then we can basically just um, execute the Docker Compose up command. All right, so now this is putting down the latest version of the image. If I create an updated version, so maybe I will change a few things. Maybe I'll add another monitor to it. I will publish a new image to this GitHub repository and then you just need to re-pull the latest version again and start it. So we just have to wait a bit. Yeah, no, so now uh, the monitor has started and yeah, you can see it prints something on the screen. So here, for example, you can see the host name, the IP address, and these are the running Docker containers, by the way. So you should also see in the logs if it connected to the Docker client successfully and yeah, if it found one running and zero stopped containers. Obviously, this is the Raspberry Pi LCD status container that is running on the system. But if you've got more Docker containers, it will just show you the numbers of the running and the stopped containers on the system. I think this is pretty cool. And also the temperature works. So yeah, here you can get some useful information. Uh, by the way, this is how it looks in my Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster. So here you can see all the free Raspberry Pis display the information that I've configured in the config file. As I can see, they have a slightly different delay. I don't know why exactly this is happening, but yeah, you see they just loop through the configured monitors and yeah, there's honestly nothing more to say about it. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe it might be useful to uh, some of you. And yeah, thank you so much for watching everybody. Of course, I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.